in snar defensive plus minus Wimby's eighth. You're just in making the this up. No, this is real. What? No, this snar? is real. This one, the, snar. Taylor Snar. It's a really good analytics site. I would recommend people okay. check it out. Uh, they have subs for fan level and everything too. It's good stuff. But he's already eighth in the league. You know, uh, and and he's 20 years old right now in defensive LeBron, which goes across years going back to 2013, 14 for guys, 23 and under. So that's a big sample. This season, Victor's 20 year old season is ranked 14th over that time frame. And he's the youngest player in the top 30. So you're just talking about a guy who is like already at this age hitting a mark that is really unusual. And I think that is like, um, yeah, I mean, uh, just the way he's able to like cut off and I, I you know people always talk about like taking away the layups and that in and of itself is is important like taking away literally those easy points off the board but I think like thinking about what that does to an NBA offense like NBA offenses most of them respond it's the pressure release thing of like we're going to try to get layups and then there'll be like a ripple response to us creating open threes like the pressure of us trying to do that having a Wimby once they start to build this team, dude, if they can like get other good defenders around him, he's going to be he's going to be a defensive player of the year sooner than later. I think it's just a matter of what year. Uh, I think the MB, MVP thing, I've said that I think he could break Derrick Rose's MVP record like age-wise. Mm. Like I think this is going to get crazy um like in the next couple of years. Um but yeah, his defensive impact is like unprecedented more or less. If you guys had a ballot, is he on there? I think like defensive player of the year goes 1 2 3 like some of the other awards do like I think you have to at least consider him there. I, I don't think you could ha- like surpass Gobert considering the Wolves success and how much defense is a part of that and how much he is a lot of the defense. But like, I, I don't know. I can't even cons- I don't know who you would put to over Wemby at this point. I don't you, know. But you think Victor Wemby was the defensive player of the year? You think he is? No, I said he's like two or three. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, hold up. I mean, <laughs> oh, but the- that's the thing. It's like, well, I think it's more of a question of how crazy is that was like that. And like, how crazy do you think it really is? Like, because that's what it is. Because I don't think it's like tinfoil, like off the off the map crazy. Like, I, I think it's it, I think it's reasonable to think about. No, is he, is what he- I'll say about it. And, you know, some of this stuff is hard to prove in the NBA long regular season, right? I don't think teams have dedicated themselves to figuring out how to attack Wemby's weaknesses on defenses. Um, Teams don't take the Spurs seriously. And so it's just like, we can kind of come out and beat this team no matter what, right? So I don't think, you know, there are specific game plans being built around beating Victor Wembenyama, right? I don't think the best minds and the best talents in the game have, you know, decided to home in on what Wemby is doing to defeat him, right? And so I think he's he benefits from playing on a team that nobody gives a damn about um, taking seriously. Like, I don't think in a playoff matchup, for instance, I'd rather him than Anthony, Anthony Davis on defense. I just think Anthony Davis is a PhD level defensive player. I can't um, believe I'm going to say about this. A rookie. I'm not sure about that. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm not sure yeah, about that. I, 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 <laughs> I can't. I can't. Waz, listen to me. I'm a Kentucky. I love AD. I defend AD more. I'm not sure, man. Like, he's, I think he might be more competitive than Anthony Davis. Like, I really do. Like, wow. He's <laughs> crazy. Dude, he's got the he's more. Con- yeah. I think I think that his resting heart rate as as a player is more steady than than Anthony Davis. Like Anthony gets up there and gets high and revs his motor no, can I'm rev high. Saying, but like, I, I, I'm not. This isn't a matter of talent to me. I just don't think he has the brain power of an Anthony Davis, somebody who's been in the league for 10, 12 years. That's and more experiential, been, though. You're saying that's like, what I and that's what I'm talking about. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that the talent isn't there, you know, to one day he'll be like the KG, literally zero weaknesses in my defensive game, and I'm just going to destroy every offense by myself. I'm not saying he's not going to get there, but KG is a defensive, was a defensive computer. You know, obviously not as toolsy as Wemby because nobody has ever been. But I think once he matches that with what he's doing, yeah, we could get to what he's talking about. But I do think the mental component matters, man, when you're playing against the best guys and people are actually dedicating, you know, every single brain in the facility is dedicated to beating you on defense. It's such a tough conversation 
because we still, even at this point, don't really have the tools to quantify defense in the way that we no. probably should at this point. And even some of the stats that Kyle may or may not have made up, I just don't think are popular enough in order <laughs> to, to really get a sense of it. And so it is still an eyeball thing. And then that starts to bleed more into the team conversation where the Spurs as a whole are not good on either side of the ball. And so you're like, well, how much do you give Wemby the credit for basically walling off a large portion of the paint just simply by standing in there? Like he basically warps the way that you're going to attack offense in a way that I'm not even sure Gobert is doing at this point. But on the other hand, all the results and all the empirical evidence would point towards someone like a Gobert or even an Anthony Davis, where you could see it, you could quantify it, and there's like something you can grasp ar- around it. Whereas like with Wemby, it's just like, well, is this like just a lack of nuance or is does not having even a secondary perimeter defender co- to go out and harass these guys and make things easier on him? Should we give him a... Uh, benefit of doubt for that. So it's like, it's a very complex conversation. I don't know, Kyle, if you have any, like where you fall on that. Uh, I mean, the, the, they defensively have looked like as, as they've kind of cleaned their lineups up, that stuff has improved and his on off stuff is insane. I, I, I'll i stay with it, man. I, I really can't believe I'm saying it, but like, I think if you swapped win beyond the, that Lakers team and in, in 80s place, I don't know that it'd be that different. Really. I don't like he's, he's, He's a really sm- he's that's the other thing too guys is this is like uh, this is like an algorithm that is like learning incredibly fast. If you watch him he's like already figuring out like where guys like I pointed to the Giannis game as a good example of Giannis, you know, one of the best finishers on the planet. Might be the the best finisher on the planet. Uh you were watching him like he early in the game he created these little bumps and kind of snuck around Wimby and you saw Wimby over the course of the game like Matador hit, like pull the chair on it so he couldn't do it let the defender go by and he just kind of like does the you know he he makes out of area plays that like other guys just can't and he's really smart about when he picks doing it like if you watch some of the guys that come into the league with like crazy defensive p- potential like we got really wild about Jaron Jackson Jr. like all the talent in the world but he's all the way on the one end of the spectrum of like he's going to go for everything. Wimby is smart about when he goes and when he doesn't. I think it's only going to get crazier. Um, so, I I don't know, man. I'm, I'm having a hard time putting a so, limit so on So, you it. think like, Wimby's the best defensive player in basketball today? I don't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see him do it in some meaningful games, for real. Like, I really would. Before, it's like, yo, this guy is the best defender we've ever seen. Like, we've seen people, you know, have stellar regular season um, defensive success, right? And then in a difficult matchup, people put you in positions you don't want to be in, right? And I get it. Like, what would happen if Rudy were on the Spurs? I think that's a, a good question too. What would happen if Rudy were on the Spurs? What would they, what would they look like? Like in terms, like I think the acclimation curve part of it that has affected their numbers. You take that out of it, but he's an offensive like you, you're trading the offensive thing too. I'm just thinking about like I'm, I'm genuinely this. We're just talking about this in real time. We didn't plan this. I'm just curious, like what what would it look like if Rudy were on the Spurs defensively? Like at the end of the season product, how what would the gap be between him and Wimby? Very quiet. I mean, I think Rudy is. I mean, I, I think Rudy is just stronger than. That's like the only advantage that he that he has. He's stronger and he's seen more. But like, obviously, he's not as fleet of foot. Wemby is somehow taller, longer, stretchier than Rudy. Um, I like. I don't know. I, I don't know that the defensive. Um, sort of outcome for the Spurs would be way worse because they had Rudy Gobert. I, I, I have a hard time believing that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I just, again, like I said, like in the regular season where nobody takes the Spurs seriously, I think that has to factor in, right? 